Now, before we run the cables, um, the cables at the solar panels are at the junction boxes here, uh, two of them coming off. What I think I'm going to do here is bring the cables up to the edge of the frame and then secure them with these stainless steel clips. Uh, these little stainless steel clips do a real nice job of holding the cables in place so they won't flop around in the wind when I'm towing. Um, and down here, we've got the end of the cable. The first thing I want to do, um, normally there would be a little indicator of polarity here. These were used panels. Some of these panels were missing that tag. So I'll just uh, confirm that with my multimeter first. So I can uh, take my multimeter, grab the two ends from the solar panel, put the probes in there. I'll put this one over on the other, other end. And as I look at this, it says 33.5 volts. That tells me two things. One, that the solar panel is working just fine, being in the sun right now. The other is that I have the polarity right. So the connector I've got this going to is the positive connection. Before we go any further, let's take a big picture view here. We've got three solar panels, and they're going to be connected one to the next to the next in series, but we're not doing that yet. First, we're going to connect a red PV wire to the positive output of the far right panel, and then we'll connect a long black wire to the negative of the left hand panel, and we'll get those wired up. Only after we've done that, we'll just plug the panels into each other to complete the series connection. We're doing this so that we don't have a potential 100 volts DC risk of shock while working on the project. So now I can actually make the connection with my solar panels. So just need to plug that in. Can't come back apart. You need a special tool to pull that off actually. And I can use some more uh, stainless steel clips and zip ties just to hold this all in place. I think I'll do something like a, uh, a strain relief loop, Some, something like that. And I'm just making sure that there's enough slack uh, for the red wire there. Um, this is in the all the way in position. I'll hit the camera if I go all the way out, but that just gives more and more slack. So it looks like we got uh, plenty of room on the cable. And this is the position the cables will be in when uh, transported and looks pretty solid. Doesn't look like it's going to be blowing in the wind or anything. Now over on this end, I've got my negative cable coming up the side of the frame. I've got it held in place with some of those stainless steel clips. Here's my end connection and I'll take my kind of home run cable from here uh, all the way to the front of the trailer. I'll plug that in there. I'll secure this with a clip. I'll go to the cross pipe, use a couple of zip ties, and go uh, the length of the trailer along the pipe here. I simply ran our long black negative wire along the pipe and then zip tied it about every foot or so. Uh, after that, I also made sure to zip tie the end of it on the front uh, along our red positive wire, making sure that it had plenty of room to flex. Okay, here we go, a full test of our slack for our wires and our rotation. So this is how the solar panels would be when it's folded up for travel. And then it would be deployed, probably something like this, maybe like that, depending on which direction the trailer's pointed, or even all the way vertical. That's what that looks like. Once I was happy with the wiring, I just went back through and cut off the tails of the zip ties. The other thing you'll notice here is that I'm only working with the negative cable of the far solar panel and the positive cable of the near solar panel. Uh, in the middle, the connections are unplugged uh, so that uh, there's no complete circuit, so there's no risk of shock. I'll plug the panels to each other uh, a little later. Next, I ran the wiring down the upright and then across this rail towards the toolbox. Now, I don't have a whole lot to spare here, so I'm gonna cut this cable right up at the connector, and then I can feed it through that cable gland.
And once I've gotten that black wire in there where I want it, make sure I got enough wire on the other side, then I just tighten this down and that squeezes onto the cable. Uh, it's waterproof and it makes a strain relief. And of course we're up under the truck box. So uh, this will be very, very weatherproof and, and it holds on tight to the wire. Now, since I've still got a fair amount of this red wire and it's still got that uh, connector factory built on there, what I'm gonna do is just pull up the wire, make sure it's the same length as the black and then cut it. Uh, and then I'll come back, push it up through here. That way, uh, however much extra I have in this factory end, um, I still have and can use as a, you know, a, just a solder wire on some other project. For the red wire, same thing again as the black. Just cut it to length, feed it up through the cable gland here, take up all the slack, make sure it reaches, and then tighten down that strain relief nice and secure. After bringing the wires through, I realized I needed to make sure they wouldn't get pinched by the gas lift for the lid. So what I'd do instead is bring those wires around behind the gas lift. Uh, there's actually this little lip here that works kind of nice as a channel. Uh, so I'll zip tie the wires out of the way there and maybe add a some sort of a like a piece of hose or something just to protect the wires so they can't uh, take any wear. The red wire then goes up through the cable gland to the DC circuit breaker. Now, in this case, uh, where it was mounted was a little hard to get to, but those DIN circuit breakers pop right out so I could uh, put the red wire in, uh, screw it down, and then just pop the circuit breaker back into place. And then I also had to reconnect the red wire going to our little combiner circuit and out to the solar charge controller. After that, I tightened down the strain relief on our red positive wire. Our black negative wire gets the exact same treatment coming up through the cable gland and strain relief, except instead of going to a breaker, it's going to the negative terminal block. Okay, we got our positive and negative coming in. Positive through the breaker and out. Uh, negative just goes to a little combiner and out. Over here we got our positive and negative solar charge controller and I think we can put the cover on here now. I completed the circuit by plugging the solar panels into each other and then turning on the DC input breaker. Just doing a real quick test here without the inverter. I'm just running uh, the charge controller straight over to the battery and I tilted the panels towards the sun. Of course, we're just into the shadow of those trees right now, unfortunately, just missed my peak sun here. But if we look, we got uh, right now, we are charging at four amps on our 48 volt nominal battery pack. Not bad, that's uh, it's something. <laughs> Now I wanted to get the UPS in place, which I'm using as an inverter. Uh, the only issue with it is it's rack mounted and the rack ears make it just a little too big to fit inside the truck toolbox. So I started by removing the handles that are on these rack ears and then I could clamp the whole thing into my vise and give it the angle grinder treatment with a cutoff disc. Just cutting those rack mount ears right off uh, so that it'll be square with the rest of the box. After that, I just used a flapper disc to sand down the rough edges. Then I reinstalled the faceplate on the UPS. On the right there, where you see all that empty space, is where the batteries originally went. Of course, we don't have those anymore. I also removed a few other uh, miscellaneous parts, which were no longer needed, and that would just save a little bit of weight. Uh, after that, reinstalled the cover on the right, and the control panel on the left. You might notice that looks upside down. I did that on purpose so it was within easier arm's reach. After that, I put the lid on and it was just a bunch of little screws to hold that down in place. 
I was then able to lift the entire inverter down into the truck toolbox where it was a real nice fit. Just had to make sure some of these other wires were out of the way. Uh, remember, this is using an Anderson 50 amp disconnect, so it was very easy to just plug right in, and I had it temporarily connected to the battery and the solar charge controller. Uh, all I had to do then also was just plug in that extension cord that I wired up uh, from the electric outlet to the back of the inverter. We're not quite done wiring this all up, but for the moment it's good enough to be charging the batteries from the solar panel and have that inverter there coming down to this electric outlet right here. And since I still have to do the other upright on the trailer, I'm just going to run my angle grinder straight off the solar trailer. That is if I actually remembered to turn the inverter on first. Sure enough, I've got power, so now I'll be able to run my power tools from the solar trailer as I work on the rest of the project. Next time we'll get back to some general fabrication, this time designing and building the uprights that are going to hold up the other three solar panels. I hope you like these videos. Please like, comment, subscribe, share them on social media, come check us out on Patreon, and until next time, stay charged up.